Hi there, welcome to this build of a 49 inch wingspan Diamond Demon and this is a really good vintage model from the late 1930s and we're building it using this great set of plans from Ben Buckle. Now in the previous videos we've got the fuselage uh, to a fairly advanced state, there's still stuff to do on it and hopefully you can see why it's called the Diamond Demon with this lovely fuselage shape. So put that on one side for the moment. We've also got the uh, tailplane, very delicate light structure and the fin, uh, rudder and fin completed. And in this video we're going to start building the main wings. Now I think in the last video I said I was going to fit the tailplane and the fin but I think before I do that I want to get the wings constructed so I can actually put those onto the fuselage and see how they fit and then when I'm putting on the tailplane and fin I want to make sure that I get the tailplane parallel to the uh, to the wings so we don't want to get anything crooked or anything so I'm going to get the wings built in this video now before we start building or I show you the preparation I've done so far because I've done just little bits of preparation there's just a couple of things that I should point out on the plan. The main spar which is a quarter by half inch in on the actual plans it says that this needs to be very hard balsa or spruce. Now I haven't got any very hard balsa that's, stra that's straight enough for me to feel confident making this wing spar out of it. So I'm going to be using some spruce and it will add a little bit more weight. It's not a great deal when you weigh it out but it will give a lot more strength so hopefully we'll be okay with that. We've got a template here which is shown on the wing which is great and I've used that to make the main wing ribs which I'll show you in a second. We've got two other templates here which are for the two terminal ribs there, uh, uh, sorry no there and there. Now be careful with these templates because they're not quite long enough. If we measure these ribs on the plan and we measure the templates we find those templates are just two or three millimetres too short which is not a, a huge amount but when we come to fit them on the wing they won't fit very well unless we slide them up and that kind of upsets our spacing. Now as far as the spacing there's a little bit of variation between the wing ribs which isn't part of the design so I've measured that and I've come up with 48 mil as the distance between the ribs and that's what I'm going to stick to rather than the plans. So I'm not going to be building on top of the plans I don't think, I'm just going to build it by measuring the actual space of the uh, of between the ribs and we've got the size of the ribs which will give us that cord width. So now we've had a look at that let's have a look at the components I've made so far and, um, and then we'll get this laid out and start building. Right, well, I've got all of the components laid out here. I've got these two wingtip components, W1, W2, and a 316 balsa, which still need quite a bit of work and gluing together to make sure that they actually look like the wing wingtip should do. And I will make sure the inside of this is lovely and clean and sanded nice. The outside I'm not so fussed about. We can do that when the wing is finished. But these are 316 balsa and just at the front they're made up with a bit of 116 just to thicken it up to meet this 316 square leading edge which is uh, tilted over on its side. Now we've got the spruce spar and from this rib here we taper it down to quarter of an inch to meet the, uh, the, rim, the, the, the tip of the wing here. The trailing edges, quarter by three quarter, I've got two of those, medium balsa, which I've put together and I've put in these consistent notches for the wing ribs, as I said, at a 48 mil spacing. Now I did this using a razor saw and a guide. If you're interested to know how I get them of a consistent depth, have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a link to a very short video just showing how I do that. 
Now I think I am going to build over the plans, but I'm going to ignore the rib spacing. But I think it will be useful for when I come to put this wing tip on, just to make sure I'm getting it in the right place. So I said I wasn't going to, but I think I will. I'll just ignore this spacing. The ribs, I've made the main ribs, which uh, come up to here using this template. I've made plywood templates or formers and I've just put the balsa in between, sanded and planed that to size. And there you get a nice, uh, a nice set of ribs. Again, look in the description below this video and there'll be a link to another video showing more detail how I do that. Now, these don't fit the spars exactly. They're a bit tight, need a bit of adjustment, but I will take them apart and I will just sand the front edge of each rib very lightly until it just slots onto that nice and tight. I'd rather do that than trying to do them all at once and end up perhaps making it too big, the slot that is. So I'll do those individually. And finally, before I set this out, we've got the two terminal ribs here, which I've made using the templates which are too short, but I've made these very slightly bigger than they should be. And what I will do is I will fit them and then eye them up and just gently sand them and custom fit them. So I'm not trusting the templates, these are bigger than the templates, slightly fatter, slightly longer. And as I said, I will just sand them to fit so I get them custom fit just right. So I'll make up the wingtip now, I'll get that glued and sanded, and then we'll set all this out and start building. Okay, I thought time now for a very quick update as this setting out is perhaps not as, as simple as, uh, as you would think. I've got two of the wingtips finished and sanded up, identical, so that's good. And that will just fit in there. Now, I, haven't, I, I still need to trim the top and bottom to make that fit just right, but I'll do that when I come to fit it. I've got the trailing edge just lifted up on the front edge by these pieces of 116 balsa. So it just lifts it up and puts it at a slight angle to maintain the camber of the wing. And you can see on the side elevation of the uh, on the plans here how that looks with that, um, that slightly angled trailing edge in the under camber. And it also supports the back of the uh, or, or the trailing edge of the wing ribs so maintaining that camber. Now I've also got a piece of 116 balsa here and the reason that's there is so that the underside of this 316 wingtip outline is flush with the underside of this quarter inch trailing edge piece because the whole of the underside of the wing stays flat. The tip comes down to meet this outline. So it get, the wingtip gets thinner and it gets thinner by the top of the wing sloping down. Now, this wingtip obviously butts up against the end of the spar here, the spruce spar, and I've got a block here that just stops that from moving away while we're setting out and gluing up. And I've got these blocks just to hold this spruce spar upright and square and stop it moving. Now, I've got one of the ribs done for these two tip ribs. It still needs the length of it trimming a little bit. And if we look at the bird mouth on this compared to these two, it's very slightly lower because this hard balsa three quarter, uh, sorry, 316 spar just slopes down very slightly to help maintain this uh, slope down of the wing tip. When we cut this, uh, oh sorry, no, not that. This now will go there, and the wing tip um, is just under this uh, this spar. So this spar comes down and sits on top of this wing tip, and this rib also will sit on top of this wing tip. We'll have a look at it later. It's it's a little bit difficult for, in my mind to visualize, but I know how it's got to be. So I'll carry on setting this out. It was mainly talking about just tilting this uh, trailing edge to maintain that under camber, which is what I wanted to uh, just show you. 
So I'll get on and carry on laying this out now. Well I've now got this right hand wing all pinned down and ready to be glued. I've got these two terminal ribs in and they look pretty good actually, I'm quite pleased with it. When we get off the building board we'll have another look and see if they need a little bit of sanding just to uh, to fit in nicely but they look they look quite good so that's uh, that's really nice to, to have that tip done because I think the plans perhaps could be a little clearer but they are old plans and um, it's good for the brain to try and work it out. I'll show you that wing tip detail once we get this all glued and we lift it off. There is some sanding and some profiling to be done there. Now I've got all of this pinned on some plastic on top of the, the building board just so we don't stick to the building board and the plastic is on those on the top of those little bits of 116 balsa that I put along to maintain that under canvas shape. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use thin CA. People often ask me why I use thin CA rather than something like PVA. It is quicker which is nice because it means you can get on but the reason I really like it is because I can check a rib, I can make sure it's exactly where I want it and I can glue it and then I can go to the next one, make sure it's exactly where I want it, square everything and glue it and as I work my way along I'm happy that these first ribs aren't moving whereas sometimes when I used to use PVA for setting out wings like this I've had the odd rib move and I've had to go back and so I just think it's it's quite nice to, to have that instant gluing as you go. I just find I get better wings doing that. And I would say that when we set out the wing, it's good not to have the joints too tight. They don't want to be sloppy, but they want to be relaxed so that the wing will sit where you put it without any tension. If you've got tension in some of the joints, when you unpin it, you could end up with a little bit of a, a twist in the wing. So anyway, I'm going to go through now and I'm going to glue each rib individually after I've checked it's in the right place and it's square. Right, well as you saw I got this wing all glued up now and it's uh, ready to come off the board but I'm just going to glue this bit of soft balsa on here and it's really soft and that is a piece to make up the, uh, the wing tip to bring it down from this leading edge down to this kind of trailing edge here. As I said it's very soft so it will sand really easily, there's way too much balsa here and here it's a probably about right, maybe still uh, a little bit too high, but that will easily sand to profile. Okay, well the moment of truth, this is all glued up now, I've got that soft tip on ready to be profiled. So let's get these last few pins out and, uh, and see, see what we've done, see how it looks. The, this is the right hand wing as you can see, and I haven't put on the terminal ri uh, rib, sorry the root rib because we'll do that when we join the left hand and the right hand to this uh, centre section so we've just left that out for the moment right 
Now let's just, if we just use a little ruler just to break any CA that's there. And there we have our wing. <laughs> and it's nice and straight, which is good. Hopefully that can be seen. Oh, we've still got the plastic and some of the uh, some of the bits on the bottom here from where that uh, that under camber was held. But hopefully, if I hold that with my top in the background, a dark background, you can see the under camber on that, and that's looking really nice. I'm really pleased with how the uh, how that drops down. We'll need to put a ruler on it and just check see whether we need a little bit of sanding, maybe just that centre, that uh, middle rib out of those three. But anyway, really pleased with that. That's turned out quite nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set all this up again and I'm going to make the left hand wing and then, uh, and then we'll have a look and see what we've got. Well I'm just about to set up the left hand wing and I thought I'd just show you uh, what I do to, uh, to aid me in building that. On the plans we've got the right hand wing and in actual fact there was an additional left hand wing that came with this, it was an afterthought to the plans supplied by Ben Buckle. But the size wasn't the same as this, it was just slightly different so I'm not going to use it. And what I've done is I've taken this right hand wing panel and I've turned it over and I can just see the, uh, the outline coming through from the right hand wing and to be honest there's only a few pertinent points that I need. I want the location of the main spar, I want the location of the wing tip and I want to know the, dis the, the location of these two terminal ribs. The other ribs I've already set the spacing with these notches that I've put in and the cord, we don't need to know where the leading edge is because the cord is going to be set by the ribs that we've already made. So there's very few reference points we need but having this bit of detail is quite useful. Hopefully you can just see the lines coming through and all I do is I just put a mark and a little mark there, a little mark there and there and then I just join up the lines with a a ruler. I mean if you do it on a window or a light table if you can't see through properly that is an aid but with this plan I can see through easy enough. Just a tip there of how I get my left hand panel. Well I've now got both wings done and off the building board and they're looking great I'm really pleased they're lovely and straight and we've got that really nice under camber. There's still quite a lot of profiling to do I haven't touched the uh, the trailing edge or the leading edge. I have done the wing tip on this one but not on the other and the reason I've not done the other one is because I thought I would show you what it looks like when it's finished and what it will become when you sand it because it looks a little bit daunting like this. Take a look. Well I'm not sure if I've done it the way it was intended but I've built up that tip and it looks kind of a well, a bit chunky, a bit of a mess at the moment, and you kind of think, how the heck are we going to get a, a, a decent wing tip out of, uh, out of that? Well, this is what I've got. The, this one was exactly the same, and I've taken that down. It's still got a lot to go, or well, not a lot to go, but a little bit to go to uh, produce a nice wing tip. But you can see, if I get that right, you can see it slopes down to the tip there. We've got this nicely profiled on the front. It, it's a bit weird the way just bending this leading uh, edge down but it fits in okay and I'm, I'm quite pleased with how it looks. Nice and flat on the bottom and this uh, gradual decrease on the top. So if you think it looks weird if you're going to build it don't give up. <laughs> just, uh, just trust that it will come out right and, and like I say that seems to have sounded quite nice. Well as I said there's still quite a lot to come off these wings, particularly the trailing edge but also putting a ball nose on the front as well. Now I'm not going to do that until I've joined the wings together. To be honest it would probably be easier now but I quite like the sharp front on this, the sharp edge corner on the back of this trailing edge. 
for measuring when I come to set the dihedral and set the wings up. I know that these wings are identical and once I start profiling them I'm going to perhaps make subtle changes that are, are different. So I'd, I'd like to join them, like I say, untouched. Now I'm not going to join them now, I'm going to make that the next video. I'm going to draw this video to a close but in the next video we're going to be making that central section and joining the wings in a, a single kind of process I think. I don't think I'm going to be making the central section and then joining. I think it will be a, 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 a joint process if you like. There you go. It's always nice to get your wings back to back and see that they're, uh, they're identical. I'm really pleased with having got these done and I can't wait now in the next video to get them joined and to get these wings profiled and finished. So anyway, hope you found this interesting. Thanks very much for watching and come back and see how we get on in the next stage of building this really great uh, 49 inch wingspan Diamond Demon.